Bandericon, Captain's Log. Uh, Chroma Squad. So, kind of continuing on a little bit from This Is The Police 2, because I do love me some XCOM-type squad-based uh, turn block fighty goodness. Uh, Chroma Squad. Now, Chroma Squad has a very, very special place in my heart in that um, I played it a long time ago. It was like six, seven years, maybe longer. I'd have to go through my review history to tell you. But it made me clap my hands with glee. Um, and it, it's, it's all that's in there, basically. It, you play a group of people who are basically doing a Super Sentai slash Power Rangers-esque TV show. And then somewhere along the lines, um, things end up a little bit too real. And, uh, you know, it's just wonderful, wholesome goodness from there. Now, uh, the game uh, in and of itself is uh, you kind of, I guess, uh, was it Final Fantasy Tactics slash uh, XCOM type formula where you've got a map, grid squares, enemies. The place where it shines, in my opinion, is like the little, little things, the little attentions to detail. So, for example, each of your ranges has their own weapon type and special ability. You have, uh, I think, probably one of the best things that I haven't seen in any game since, really, of that type. The ability to do team-up moves. So, one ranger can give the other one a leg up and basically throw them across the map, which is based, I think, off of their strength, uh, like, stat. Or you can do weapon team-up moves, and the best ones is, obviously, you, all five of you, can team up and do one ultra super attack. Uh, kind of if anyone's ever seen the original Power Rangers, that thing where they get the weapons and they turn it into that one massive abomination of a gun and then blow the hell out of the bad guy. It's... It's just perfect. Like, it's all heart. It's all wonderful. As I remember, I think the soundtrack was also pretty damn decent as well, but I'd have to play, play again, which I, I very may well do. Um... The game also has uh, a, like a little bit of a base building mechanic, more more just like a standard linear set of upgrades because there are actually sequences where you play as the Megazord slash gigantic city stomping robot. Uh, I, I remember them being quite simple, but still great fun. And as with anything, it helped break up it helped break up the gameplay and kind of give you a bit of new, a bit of verve. And God, there's nothing wrong with that at all. Um. The story in of itself kind of goes places. There are some very vague but fairly shallow multiple choices. You can get some extra characters in there with some slightly different ability types. Kind of like your white slash green ranger situation, which is nice. Again, the theme in this is more important. It really does bring you back to the days when you were sitting as a kid watching Saturday morning cartoons and uh, just with a smile on your face and a bowl of breakfast cereal in your lap and sometimes all over the couch and floor. Um... I remember I took great joy in the fact that you can actually change your um, character's catchphrases, both for um, getting into the Megazord, uh, I believe for doing the tr transformation and possibly some of the team-up attacks. Um, so for me it was great fun watching my rangers scream, you'd better lube up while they jump into a Megazord. Uh, uh, this is going to be a fairly short little trip down memory lane, but... I would sincerely suggest, if you have a chance, pick this game. It's, I would say it's worth it at full price, and I don't remember that being a, exactly a substantial amount. Um, but go play it, enjoy it, it's fun. So many games miss the mark by a mile trying to be something that they aren't, and this game knows exactly what it's about. It's just, it's Saturday morning cartoons, it's Power Rangers, it's a bit of actual fun. The game's not particularly challenging. You can quite happily sit down and finish it in a sitting um, about like seven hours or so, but go reconnect with your inner child. It's fantastic. I really am struggling here. There's so much that I can't really quantify into words. Uh, probably a more skilled person could sit you down and talk to you about the technical aspects and why this and that and how the soundtrack is an excellent contrapose with the, the gameplay. I'm not. This game made me feel good. It made me feel fun. And it came at a time when, like, shit was difficult, and I wasn't having a great time, and it just took everything away from me for, like, a couple hours, and God help me, I enjoyed it. And I, I am probably just gonna go and play it again now, if I'm perfectly honest, which is probably the most ringing review I can give. 
Uh, today's call to action is going to be to go to your local charity slash thrift store and find an interesting looking book. Buy it and read it. Just really swing for the fences with this one. Because trust me, some of the stuff you can find is amazing. Or, if you're feeling a little bit cheeky and you're in England, go to your local Witherspoons and see if there's anything on the shelves that you can read. Ask permission from the owner to borrow it and return slash replace it. Other than that, give it a go. Anyway, Bando Crown out.